Hello and welcome to our introductory lesson on A to J Author and Hot Docs. My name is Jessica Bolak frank and I am the Program Coordinator here at the Center for Access to Justice and Technology at Chicago Kent. On our agenda today, we have how A to J Author and Hot Docs work together, their differences, and the development process. Then we'll go into an introduction to A to J Author and an introduction to Hot Docs. First, let's talk about the differences between A to J Author and Hot Docs. Hot Docs has a slightly complicated authoring interface, while A to J Author has a simple authoring interface. Hot Docs end user interface is form-like and is more efficient for advocates. On the other hand, A to J Author's end user interface is graphical, friendly, and intuitive for pro se litigants. Hot Docs generates documents, while A to J Author gathers information but does not generate documents. This is Hot Docs authoring interface. It is text heavy and there are multiple authoring windows and components. This is the main authoring window in A to J Author. It is very visual with a flowchart, tabs, and question outline. Also, unlike Hot Dogs, all of the authoring work is done in one platform. On the end user side, Hot Docs is plain and form like. You can add slightly more information than a paper form, but not much. There can be multiple questions per screen. And this type of interface is much more efficient and effective for use by advocates rather than pro se end users. A to J Author, on the other hand, is graphical, friendly, and intuitive for pro se users. We have specifically designed A to J Author to pose one question at a time. We have built in tools to let you give the end user additional helpful information, be it in the form of text, audio, or video. And we have also built in a lot of white space to keep it open and clean. The complete A to J Author and Hot Docs development process has 10 steps. First, you design the Hot Docs template. Second, you import your Hot Docs component file, that is the file where all your variables are stored, into A to J Author. It is important to remember that you cannot import variables from A to J Author into Hot Docs. You can only import hot docs variables into A to J Author. The third step is to design your A to J guided interview with those same variables that were used in your hot docs template. On this screen, you can see how the variables in the hot docs template at the top are being used by, the, by you in designing your A to J guided interview. The fourth step in the development process is to upload your hot docs template to Law Help Interactive, which is the national server. LHI will then assign a special ID number to that Hot Docs template. Then you would upload your completed A to J guided interview to LHI as well and associate it with that ID number for the Hot Docs template. The sixth step is that LHI will generate a hyperlink which can be pasted to your website or your legal aid organization's website so that the interview can be accessed by pro se end users. The last four steps are how the guided interview and the hot docs template interact with your end user. So your end user will select that link that LHI gave you and they will launch the interview. The end user will complete the interview and click submit their answers. That data that is collected in the A to J guided interview goes to LHI via a .anx file, which is an A to J guided interview answer file, which, and then it is compiled with the corresponding hot docs template. Finally, LHI returns a completed document to your end user. Here you can see how A to J Author gathers the information from the end user in questions, stores that data in variables, which are then housed in the A to J answer file, that .anx file that I mentioned. That answer file is then transmitted to LHI's national server, which reads the data in the variables, and places that information into the appropriate spots on the hot docs document. So to review, you create the hot docs template and then the A to J guided interview. They are both uploaded to the LHI server. The end user then accesses them, enters their information and answers questions in the A to J guided interview. The server puts those answers into the hot docs template and the end user is delivered a document. So let's dive into A to J author a little bit. First, we'll look, take a look at the software and its different components. And then we'll talk about question design, where all the work actually happens. This is the first screen you'll see when you open a new A to J guided interview. We have file controls, navigation tabs, 
feedback and report bug option. There's help, which will take you out to an A to J guided interview authoring guide. You can close the interview. And then as you'll see in the middle is the main work window. The first navigation tab to discuss is the interview tab. In the interview tab, you can add general information and metadata, such as the title, description, and jurisdiction, the author, the version, the language, and the history. You can insert graphics, either branding logos or end graphics. There are some file type and size restrictions on those graphics, which you can see here. You can add a feedback option, which allows end users to provide you feedback if you specify an email address. Otherwise, all feedback goes to our development team. You can choose whether your avatar, the guide avatar, is blank or tan. This selection will also set your end user's avatar to that same blank or tan. Finally, you can select language. Our two options currently are Spanish or English. If you choose Espanol, the only thing that changes are the navigation labels, such as the back, the next, the continue button. The question text itself is not translated. So if you're looking to create a guided interview in another language, you need to translate that question text yourself. Here is the interview tab. You can see all the sections I just discussed here. The metadata, feedback options, language, avatar display, graphics, and the history section. The history section is particularly important if you're going to be doing multiple drafts or keeping track of who the developer was. This might be the place to put your information if you're going to be handing this off to a uh, legal aid organization. It keeps a track of the history of the creation of that guided interview. The next tab down the list is the variables tab. In the variables tab, you can track the coordinating hot text template. It lists variables by name. If you double click on the variable name, it will bring up a variable information window, which will show you specifically which questions that variable is being used in. Double clicking then on the question name will take you directly into the question editing window. This tab can also show if variables have been used or are not used. It will tell you if a variable is a repeat variable. That's more of an advanced topic. We'll talk about repeat dialogues in the future. And it allows you from here to load those variables from your hotdocs component file. Remember again, you cannot load A to J author variables into hotdocs. You only can load hotdocs variables into A to J author. Here is the variables tab. From this tab, you can also add and delete variables as well. The third tab is the steps tab. The steps act as the main outline for your guided interview. They give the end user a feeling of progression through the A to J guided interview. On this tab, you can add new steps with the question steps drop, drop down. You can have up to 12 steps. Each step, however, can have an unlimited number of questions. Think of the steps as the main bullet points in an outline. You can also on this tab edit the step name and preview the path that your end user is going to see. An A to J guided interview comes preloaded with four steps. On this tab, you can add more steps, delete steps, or rename the steps to specifically fit your guided interview. The more steps you add, the further away the courthouse will get. And you can see how far away that courthouse is on the path preview to the right. Next, we have the report tab. In the report tab, you can access a full report of your guided interview. That full report will show all variables, questions, etc. You can also filter that report by its step. If you only want to print information for a particular step, you can also create a script for audio. That prints only the text of the questions, which is particularly helpful when you want to record audio clips for certain questions. Here's a screenshot of the reports tab. The report tab becomes important during the editing phase when you want to check your guided interview for plain language and grammatical issues. By printing a report, you can do that quickly without having to click through your interview. Another important feature in A to J Author is the preview mode. You can access the preview mode by clicking the preview tab or by clicking the preview button that comes up with each design window. In the preview mode, you can see your A to J guided interview as the end user would see it. This is great for testing purposes. 
And in the preview mode, there is the preview mode menu, which contains the variables, script, edit this, and resume edit. By clicking variables, it will open up the interview variables window. The script button will open up the scripting window, which shows the logic for that question. Edit this takes you to the question design window for that current question. And resume edit takes you back to the question where you entered the preview mode from. As you can see, the preview mode shows you the end user view, but it also allows you to overlay that variables window and the scripting window. These are invaluable for testing and troubleshooting. The last tab we'll talk about in this section is the upload tab. It allows you to upload your A to J guided interview to LHI, and it allows you to clear all media, which removes references to all attached media files. You would use this option when starting from someone else's guided interview or when using an old guided interview of your own to create a new one. In this class, you probably won't need to use the upload tab, but it's always good to know the whole software package that you are working within. The next section in this lesson will focus on the question design window. This is where 99.9% .9 of your work will happen. So you've seen this screen before. It's the first screen you'll see when opening your A to J guide interview. Let's focus though on the work window. It is the light blue insert next to the navigation tabs. It contains a steps filter, the question list, an ability to copy and paste questions, an ability to add and delete questions, and the ability to clone and insert questions. It also lets you set a starting point question and an exit point question. The exit point question should only be used when you are enabling save and resume in A to J author. Otherwise, none is the appropriate option. There also is the question design help will take you to that authoring guide I mentioned before. We have the question flowchart. We also have the ability for you to zoom in on the flowchart if you wanna focus on a specific question and you can print that flowchart. The two main sections of the work window are the question list and the question flowchart. By double clicking on a question in the question list, you will be taken to the question design window. In the question flowchart, you are able to drag and drop question boxes to keep them organized. You can also double click on that question box to open the question design window. And here is the famous question design window. You will quickly become familiar with this screen. Here's where you're actually going to create the questions, logic, and flow of your A to J guided interview. At the top, you have the question step and the question name. Then you have the question text itself. Within the question text, you can add definitional pop-ups, create hyperlinks, and you can bold or italicize your text. Under that is the learn more information section, the learn more question that the end user's avatar thinks, and the question help, which is the answer that the guide avatar gives. Within the question answer section, you can again add definitional pop-ups, you can hyperlink text, and you can bold and italicize that text. To the right, you can see that there is a question preview. This is what your question is going to look like to your end user. On the left, we have the question design tabs, the question, the fields, the buttons, and the advanced. At the bottom, there is a design notes section where you can add notes about this specific question. On all questions, you can add audio. And at the very bottom, you can view the code in XML. You can have a full screen preview, which will take you to that preview mode. Or you can close out this question. The question design window allows you to identify the step and name for the question, to draft the question, with definitional pop-ups and learn more information in the form of graphics or video. It allows you to add audio clips in the form of MP3s to your question, and it allows you to preview the question as designed. In future lessons, we'll go more in depth, but for now, that is the overview of the A to J Author software tool. We're now going to move on to talk about the other component to a successful document assembly project, Hot Docs. Hot Docs is a software tool that allows you to automate documents. Document automation allows you to utilize pre-existing text or data to create a new document with input from a series of questions. 
You use HotDocs to identify the places on a court form where data will go once collected from the end user during an A to J guided interview. HotDocs is nicely integrated with Microsoft Word. Most work that you're going to be doing is with court forms and it will be in Microsoft Word using the HotDocs toolbar. The HotDocs toolbar is automatically installed when you install HotDocs and it appears as a tab in Microsoft Word. The toolbar contains all of the tools needed to turn court forms into automated documents. You can test and preview a completed document using the Test Assemble button. You can create variables on that toolbar as well. You can either highlight text to turn it into a variable in an existing document, or you can create a variable within a text field. For fill in the blank fields, you create variables within transparent text boxes so that you can place them in the proper place on the form without disrupting lines and tables. You make a text box transparent by selecting No Fill and No Outline under Shape Fill and Shape Outline in the Format tab in Word. Once you create a variable, you can access it again by double clicking on it or right clicking and selecting Edit Field. You can select how the variable is displayed from the default format drop down menu. With all the variables that you create in this class, it is important to use the community standard naming convention for variables in HotDocs and A to J Author. That standard is that you capitalize the first letter of the first word and you include a two letter abbreviation for the variable type at the end. So, for example, a number variable would be user age NU. NU being that two letter indicator at the end. Text variable, user address TE. Date variable, court date DA. In later lessons, we will discuss what the, what the specific two letter indicators are. Following the standard allows others to later pick up your work, to fix any issues, troubleshoot problems, or to update it if there are changes in the law or heuristics. The last section of hot docs to discuss is the component manager. The component manager shows all of the variables, computations, and dialogues used in that specific project. The component manager is accessed from the HotDocs toolbar, and you may find it useful to keep the component manager open while working in Word. Finally, here is a list of resources for you to draw from as you learn A to J Author and HotDocs. The A to J Authoring Guide uses screenshots to walk you through learning everything about A to J Author. We have training videos on specific topics on our A to J Author YouTube channel. We also have our A to J Author Starter Kit, which includes the authoring guide, four starter guided interviews, video demonstrations, training modules, sample XML lists, and an end graphic sample. The authoring guide and the starter list can both be downloaded from a to j Are there any questions?